Hello, everyone. I welcome you all to the Rubber Industry News Server. Uh, this is a techno-based weekly online program for global rubber industry. Sorry, Prab. Namaskar. Welcome you all for this uh, episode number 45 of the Rubber Industry News Server. In this news server, we have a special talk on the how laboratory information management systems, we shortly call LIMS, can improve the lab's efficiency and in, in, in return for save both time and money. And we have invited a specialist on this LIMS, um, Dr. Phil Williams. He will be talking and also addressing various issues related to the laboratory information management system. As you know, uh, Rubber Industry News Server is managed and owned by Technobase. Is a, let me brief you about Technobase for you. If you are not familiar with the Technobase or have a little understanding of what we do. Uh, so Technobase is based in Thailand, established in 2005. It's almost uh, 17 years ago. Um, it is recognized as International Resource Center for Polymer Industries and Technologies. Uh, we have uh, two types of um, uh, services which could divide into professional education and other one is the business services. When you talk about a professional education, uh, we have online program training, master classes, workshops, executive diploma 360 degrees, skilled assessment test, publication and the digital library. When it comes to the business services, we host, um, uh, organize exhibitions and conferences. We host the virtual events and webinars, road shows and networking events, and also the technical and business consulting services. We also offer the um, factory and uh, process audit. And along with that one, we do offer a lot of service on marketing and branding of technologies and the products. Uh, when it comes to the industry focus, the technology focus, mainly we do on the polymer. So we're talking about polymer means rubber, latex tire, plastics and composites, polyurethane, and foams, adhesives and coatings. And we also have technology side on energy environment, membrane filtration, recycling and recovery, nanotechnology, smart manufacturing, and also various other chemical processes. Uh, you can always check more information about Technobiz at the technobiz.org. You find all the information that you need. Um, I do encourage, invite you all to join the journey of Technobiz. And you can always contact me for any assistance you need on the uh, from Technobis point of view, you have my contact information. This is my contact information. We are based in Bangkok, Thailand. I'm reachable by WhatsApp or also by email. Uh, let me go into the details about the Technobis services for the rubber, latex, and tire industry. See, this is a rubber industry news server, so I will go in details about the uh, services for the uh, rubber, latex, and tire industries. First of all, we offer global services. We have an exhibition, the GRTE, which is called Global Rubber Latex and Tire Expo. The fifth edition will be organized uh, during the 29th to 31st March 2023, next year in Bangkok, Thailand. And this is recognized as the gateway to global markets and knowledge hub for the rubber, latex, and tire industries. Uh, please note these uh, dates, and I encourage all of you to participate. And the next event we have in our exhibition is called Middle East Rubber and Tire Expo. This is our second edition, which we held during the 21st to 22nd November 2023 in Sharjah, United Arab Emirates. This is a cl very close to located in Dubai. I think most of you have been with Dubai. You can find all information about this event at expo.technobiz.org. So we have two exhibitions which we organize, one in Asia, other one is in the Middle East. At these exhibitions, we also address research areas, uh, areas focus called rubber research and patents, post uh, In this one, we uh, focus on the latest research developments that will benefit the industry and also the patent registered as a posters. Both events have this, this uh, poster fair on the rubber research and patents. We offer the, the rubber industry online training program. We also offer physical training programs, but due to the COVID, we have we have not done last two years. But uh, in, the, in the next year onwards, we will have a physical training programs also. For the for the rubber industry, we have developed a rubber industry online training program. Um, we have been working with the more than 40 experts, well experienced and knowledgeable from the different parts of the world as a resource person for this uh, online training program. Currently, we have developed more than 250 short topics, which are uh, 30 minutes to three hour long and we have uh, 30 master classes uh, one day to 10 days long and we are offering a diploma program next year that is a three-month online program 
So all these are to the, our knowhow-webinars.com or knowhow webinar project. And this is our diploma program, which is a, a 360 degrees, which means that we cover both the technical aspects as well as the management aspects of the rubber industry. This is a purely non-tire industry. Okay, we will have, we'll be developing a program focus on the tire industry later, but uh, right now this rubber industry technology and management executive diploma 360 degrees is focused only on the non-tire industry. We have a number of books, we publish a books, rubber industry books. You can check more details of our books at store.technobiz.org. There are more than 50 books available um, fo focusing on the rubber technology, rubber processing. Okay, feel free to check it out. And the rubber industry news server, this is a weekly program. We have started, as you know, today we are on the 45th episode. It means we have done 45, 45 episodes in the past, 44 episodes in the past. Each episode, we have a different focus. We'll have a, you know, technical talks, uh, research presentations, market outlooks, panel discussions, you know, the business conversations and leadership conversation like that. So we cover broad range of subjects related to the rubber and the tile industry. And we, we have started you know, very recently a latex industry news hour also, but this is not a weekly, this is a fortnightly, which means that once in every two weeks. Okay, this week coming, we will have a, a latex industry news hour coming up. Um, this is a aim for the focus on the latex industry only. And you can always subscribe to it at the virtual events.technobis.org. And Rubber Industry Connect is our digital marketing platform uh, for the industries who like to use our service to promote their businesses or technologies globally through our, our social media platforms or various channels that Technobase have been working. Right? Uh, there is option also have the various packages also available. We are currently we are working on the Rubber Industry Digital Library. Um, what we say digital library, it's we try to be in a, a totally a literature center for the rubber industry, you know, uh, with technical papers, brochures, or presentations, everything you can put in there. Currently work in progress. Uh, hopefully by the GRT next year March, we'll be able to make use of make make it ready for you. Um, uh, this rubber industry digital library to use. And if you have something to share to the industry, I encourage you to join, uh, become the member, and you can upload your literature, whether it's a papers, whether it's a presentations, or videos, or pictures, or your CV, okay, or anything that you know related to the rubber industry. Rubber means rubber, solid rubber, latex, and tire industry all together. This is going to be very useful for the industry professionals. And so please check it out whenever it's convenient to you. Um, we have a social media platform that which we work on the link, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, close to 20,000 plus um, uh, followers, you know, in, together in all these platforms together following our, our activities. So if you are not uh, part of our you know, social media platform, please do subs, you know, subscribe or follow us on the social media as well so that you get updated. Okay. Um, we have a video platform on YouTube, a technology channel, and like Rubber Industry News Hour, it is available in record format in, on the uh, video video platform Technobase. So please feel to check it out. Please feel to follow our uh, Technobase channel on YouTube. Okay. And other than that, we have various consulting services, technical, marketing, branding, and a promotional event organization, all kinds of things we offer for the rubber industry. So that's about um, the uh, Technobase. I'm hoping that you find this you know, presentation give you some idea about what we do, what kind of services we offer for, uh, for the rubber, latex, and tire industry. But you can always check the uh, our website, technobase.org, for more information. Okay. Episode number 45, Rubber Industry News Server. I welcome you all for this episode. In this episode, we have Dr. Phil Williams. Um, he'll be talking about how laboratory information management systems, shortly we call LIMS, can improve your lab's efficiency. In brackets, I put save both time and money, I think, which is very important. I think this topic is very important for all the rubber industries who have a labs. Okay. So let's uh, invite uh, Dr. Phil Williams. Before I let him come on board, let me introduce um, him who, uh, about Dr. Phil uh, Williams. He has a PhD and currently is working as a consultant covering limbs. You know, I think I repeat this limbs 
laboratory information management systems. He is expert on the lab automation and the thermal analysis. He has more than 36 years experience and he's, he, he's been working on improving the lab's efficiency and maximizing valuable resources. Actually, he has been on, he's active on the LinkedIn. He has, uh, currently has more than 25,000 connections, followers on his LinkedIn page. And also he has a LinkedIn group just for the LIMS for you, L-I-M-S number for you. There are currently 3,400 members. So it's, you can see Dr. Phil William, Williams, He's a specialized on the limbs, lab automation. So it's a good opportunity from uh, to learn from the uh, uh, Dr. Philip Williams, and I invite him to give a talk on the how laboratory information systems can improve your lab's efficiency. Thank you very much to um, Techno Business for inviting me to talk on this very important subject. Um, a lot of laboratories don't uh, are not always aware um, of how much money and time they can save by having a proper system to help manage and automate their um, sample handling. And this is particularly important to any laboratory which handles samples um, and needs to test them and report them to their customers or their, uh, perhaps to internal departments like production to pass batches and things like this. Okay. Um, so um, as the topic was described, laboratory information systems, um, sometimes called laboratory information management systems, but they're the same sort of thing. And uh, it's a way of, uh, I'll come on to how that works and some of the benefits. As I say, I'm Phil Williams. Um, as Pram said, I've got uh, a quite a background in automation. I work with ICI, AstraZeneca, and a few other companies over my many years. Um, although I'm semi-retired now, and mostly do marketing work around LIMS uh, using LinkedIn. Right, and you'll see the LIMS for you group, if you join, if you're part of um, um, LinkedIn, you can go on and look up LIMS for you, and that will point you to my page where I have three and a half thousand LIMS-based people who are members of that group, so I buy 25,000 connections. Okay, so let's... Um, talk about the talk itself, what I'm going to cover briefly. Uh, first of all, just a quick definition of limbs. What is a limbs? Um, the most important bit of the presentation is why you need a limbs, or why you should be considering a limbs for your laboratory if you haven't got one. What are the main benefits? And of course, the important thing is how much it's going to cost and what benefits you're going to get in terms of cost and time savings that you're going to achieve. Um, one of the big problems with limbs is there's over three, 300 limbs vendors out there. So how do you choose which one? And I'm going to give an example of a system that I've been involved with, uh, a company I've worked with in the past um, and still do some work for. And I think they offer a very good solution. Um, but of course, it's up to you to look around and compare systems. And finally, just to summarize, of course. And then we can have a question and answer session um, and then we can uh, go into any more questions that other people have. Right, okay, so, sorry that went back, let me just go back, that jumped, I will just go back to the previous screen. Okay, um, and again, one more, thank you. Okay, right, so LIMS is, as we said before, is a laboratory information system and it helps to manage the uh, flow of materials and samples uh, through a laboratory. Um, it's very important for a modern lab to be able to operate efficiently and keep track of uh, what's happening in the lab in terms of sample, people, calibrations, etc. Uh, the limbs can help you keep uh, control of that by sample tracking in particular, controlling the workflow, generating worksheets, for instance, assigning jobs to particular instruments. Um, and this is going to replace quite often a lot of Excel spreadsheets, which uh, labs quite often use, which have their advantages and disadvantages. And I'll go into that later if you wish. Um, look, the most, more, most modern limb systems uh, help you to automate connections to instruments, for instance. So this helps cut down things like transcription areas and uh, that sort of thing. 
and also check that the instrument is in calibration, for instance, before it's used. Um, and of course, it's very important to uh, for the management to get a handle on what's happening in the laboratory. And this also helps to um, facilitate reg regulatory compliances if your lab is inspected either by a government authority or a customer, an important customer. Because the important thing, of course, is in today's competitive world is that you have to have you have to sometimes have the edge over your competitors and having a nice uh, system in place where you can show your customers that you're doing things in a, a professional manner rather than based on scribbling bits on paper and notebooks makes it look much more professional and give you that benefit. Okay, the typical flow in a laboratory will obviously vary from industry, but uh, basically there are several steps in the processing of samples. Um, first of all, you have the registration of the sample coming in. Um, you may want to produce labels or barcodes uh, to uniquely identify the sample, um, which can be done easily by a limb system. Um, you may want to specify what preparation needs to be done with the sample. How does it need to be stored? Does it need to be, does a reference sample have to be taken, for instance, and stored somewhere separate for future use? Um, does the sample have to be um, heated or cooled or mixed with something to before the work can uh, proceed? Then there's the main scheduling activity, which is the work um, allocation. And you can produce worksheets if you want, or you can have uh, obviously on screen uh, systems for the electronic lab notebook, for instance, to allow people to uh, schedule what they've got to do uh, in terms of number of samples and uh, what tests they have to do. And of course, the instruments can then be uh, fed from that system. So the information samples can flow to the instrument, the instrument can then do the analysis, and then the results can then be fed back into the system automatically if there's a, a connection, which one of the options, of course, with the limbs. Um, once the testing is done, you've got a result, of course. There are several stages that you need to sometimes go through before you actually release the results to uh, your production department or to your customer. And this is the main steps of validation, first checking that the results look okay, and final approval before the uh, results are published um, that uh, you may need to sometimes do a retest to make sure that the samples inspect and also to comply with quality control. Um, reporting, of course, the last stage is obviously getting that information to your customer, whether it be internal to your plant um, or to an external customer, where you might produce a certificate of analysis. Um, you might have to produce uh, data for various things. You might want to talk to an enterprise system uh, like SAP, for instance, um, where the samples are uh, registered you know, through the whole system. And then things like costing, of course, can come into that as well. So you could actually generate an invoice for a customer um, to uh, you know, get a payment for that test. And of course, all that information is archived. And that's important to have a backup system to make sure that you can record and you have this chain of custody, as we call it, to prove that you're doing things in the correct manner. And if you're changing things, those are recorded with the reason why. And there must be certain procedures that you may have to follow, like uh, G GLP, good laboratory practice procedures, and the big advantage of a limb system that helps you cope with these and the various regulations that uh, seem to be coming more and more these days. Okay, benefits of limbs. A couple of um, screens now just talking about the main benefits. Uh, as I mentioned, the big one is sample tracking. Keep an eye on where samples are up to. Have they been received? Have they been done? What's the results? Are they in spec? Error reduction, I say, if you can automate the process of putting labels on, uh, getting the results from instruments automatically, then you cut down the uh, errors. Uh, due to things like transcription errors. And as you know, with computer systems, one spelling mistake can be disastrous on some systems. So uh, this will make life a lot easier for you if you have a, some form of checking when you're doing data entry. Um, fast data retrieval, obviously, if it's uh, in the system and you have access, then obviously you can look up the statistics and see what the sample's doing. 
uh, what the uh, lab's doing, how efficient it is and so forth. Um, obviously, you don't lose data. You haven't got to, to hunt for a spreadsheet or a, a paper record or somebody's pinched the logbook. Um, it's all there on the system. Report generation is very important for management, of course. And um, as I mentioned before, uh, archive, archiving the data and then have an audit trail is extremely important. Other benefits uh, is increased productivity. And this means that you can process samples faster. Uh, this is very important these days when you're in a competitive situation and you want to take on hopefully more work. One of the benefits of um, having a limb system is that it will save you time. Um, now, you might say, well, that was going to save me some people, but it's not so important as that. The important thing is actually to hopefully get more work uh, by uh, being able to take on more work, uh, better quality work, um, and get to more business and be more productive. Um, so this means you'll do more with the same people rather than trying to reduce numbers, for instance. Um, you can obviously track the productivity of the laboratory, how it's performing. You can schedule the routine tasks, things like maintenance, uh, for instance, or if you have to do things like stability testing, again, that can be handled by a limb system um, to uh, program when a test needs to be done, where the sample is located, and and if uh, results are within spec, etc., they can flag up some uh, perhaps some warning for some other work to be done. I mentioned regularly compliance. That's very important for traceability and audit trails. That uh, can be built in, and um, you can also, if you wish, you can let people have access to that data outside the lab itself. So the production uh, manager, for instance, could have access to some of the batch data to release a batch. So um, stuff can get uh, released much quicker and save time in the factory. OK, we come on to the justifications now. So they're the benefits. But how do you actually qualify those and prove to your management that you've got this money you want to spend on a limb system, but you've got to justify it? Now, there are tangible benefits, ones you can easily quantify, and there's a few intangible ones, which are not so easy, but can be just as important. So a few of the tangible benefits, for example, as I mentioned before, is improved sample and test turnaround, turnaround time, where you can save time there. You get better quality of reporting and automation of that. Uh, regularly compliance, I mentioned before. Uh, electronic links to instruments. And you can also get these um, links to the enterprise systems um, to you know, complete the um, computerization management of uh, the information. Um, you can get um, improvements in cost savings by um, releasing finished products earlier in production. You can hopefully might spot process problems in process problems earlier and might be able to be able to correct them and save uh, batches going out of spec and uh, saving time on reworking, which can be very costly, both in time and money. Um, you can also monitor raw material supplies. If you can do more testing, one of the advantages you can do is actually test the raw materials, which um, can be very important because if you have a change of supply, for instance, it's very important to make sure that that change of uh, a particular ingredient doesn't affect your quality of your product. And if you have a good limb system and uh, you save time just doing routine testing, then you can spend more time on doing other testing, which you probably wouldn't do, uh, for instance, like doing more raw material testing, which has then has a knock-on benefit for getting a better product. Um, the tangible benefits you mentioned. Now we talk about a little bit about the intangible benefits. Um, one is you get a much better um, consistency of working. So everybody knows what the system is. So if somebody, a key person in the lab is off sick, then obviously uh, the work will still proceed quite nicely. Um, and so you can reference it to other uh, methods, SOPs, etc., can all be linked uh, to your handling of samples. Uh, so it gives you traceability and make sure that things get done properly in a consistent manner. Um, 
A very important one, as I said, one of the problems with uh, companies today is that there's a lot of competition uh, for your services. And to get the best out of that, um, you need to ideally have a good image of your laboratory to external um, clients or to new people, for instance, you might be trying to get on board. Um, is that the it just improves the overall image of the laboratory and makes it much more um, professional looking. And that can be the difference between getting an order from a major customer or not. Because um, not just price, of course, it's sometimes other people just like you know to see a f efficient laboratory rather than scraps of paper and bits and pieces all over the place. Um, obviously, you get better information for management. And that obviously will have a knock on effect uh, and both in time and um, savings. Just an example here, how you can qualify this. What you can do is you can break down each step. You remember in that flow diagram of receiving the sample, et cetera. For each step, you can then break it further down if you want. And then you can then time how long it takes to do the various steps. So if you look on the left hand side, there's current activities. So the first one is recording the details in the manual system, perhaps, and then going on to selecting the testing type and then preparing the samples and the label and uh, routine tests and uh, assigning that to the appropriate person. But if you look in the middle column there, you see then there's certain problems that can occur in bottlenecks. Uh, details might be missed. The book gets lost if you've got a log book, which a lot of laboratories do have, the manual system. Uh, transcriptions errors. Again, if you have a problem, sometimes that can cause a lot of problems and take a lot of time to correct. Uh, labels are quite often handwritten, not very really clear. You can have duplicate IDs, which can cause a lot of problems. And uh, paperwork sometimes have to be transported from one lab to another, which can cause delays and problems. On the benefits side, of course, you can look at the benefits of a limb. You can automate a lot of the, ent the entry uh, checks can be made at the entry uh, point. So uh, errors can hopefully be eliminated or reduced. Um, connection to the limb system to produce labels, barcodes, and uh, assigning the test from a sample type uh, to a particular instrument or a work procedure to be done automatically. And you could save several minutes per sample. So you can then, if you know how many minutes you're going to save for the whole process, then you can then multiply that by the number of samples per week and get an idea of the savings involved in terms of time and money. So in this example, for instance, we could save on an average uh, procedure four and a half minutes, 300 samples, gives you 22 and a half hours per week or 146 days per year. And remember, when you're looking at those costs involved, uh, when you talk about person time, it's not just their salary, there's all the overheads associated with that. So that can be very significant and certainly double or treble the actual hourly rate as such. So again, you can look at that and then you can also look over the effect of the business, what's gonna happen if you want to increase the uh, workload uh, over the next few years. Um, that again can make a, a difference in the calculation. If number of samples go up, then you can save more time and more money. Um, based on my knowledge of the systems I've been involved with, which is quite a few, um, the general payback time is typically uh, 18 months, sometimes up to two years is a, is a sort of a broad estimate of where uh, the time savings um, and return on investment can be made. And of course, after that period, you're then starting to make money and save time um, more. Uh, and then that you know, return on investment is then obviously, uh, you know, bringing cash into the company, justifying the expense. Okay, um, I mentioned earlier, there's lots of uh, vendors out there. Uh, as I said, I did a recent uh, check with some of my uh, people I've been involved with, and I found 307 different suppliers of limbs. Um, and here on the screen, here's a few of the big major ones. Um, the big American systems there, of course, like LabVantage and uh, Labware, Pertinent Armour, etc. They're big American companies, well known. Um, 
and then there's some medium-sized companies. Um, and the one I'm going to mention today, just as an example, is Autoscribe, which is a UK-based uh, company. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about that. Now, when you're selecting, when you're looking at all these different suppliers, there are basically two choices that you have. You can either have a system where you have the system fairly well defined by the customer, by the uh, limbs provider, and you then have to change your procedures to fit their software. And this is quite often the case with the larger American-based systems that uh, they have everything ready in their format. Then you have to unfortunately change your procedures to fit their screens and and the way you they put data in and so forth. Now, what I like about the Autoscribe system, which I'll come on to, is that um, it works the other way around. The software is very flexible and can be configured by the user, uh, which means that you can change the software to fit your the way your laboratory works, not the other way around. And this gives you more flexibility and also uh, makes things future proof. Okay, so Autoscribe, um, as I said, I've been working with them, a UK based company. They're a family run business with over 40 years experience with limbs. Um, and um, they basically have, a, their, their only activity is limbs. They don't like some of the other suppliers have lots of different uh, divisions or departments. Their focus is just limbs. Um, they have very easy use software. Um, the unique feature, which is very important, as I mentioned in the earlier screen, is it's highly configurable by the user. Okay, um, so you don't have to get the IT department involved uh, excessively if you don't want to, because as we know, IT departments can be a problem. Bless them socks. Okay, um, help desk support. Um, they have their manned by um, direct limbs experts when you ring them up if you've got a problem. Uh, unlike some of the other firms where you ring up, you get routed to Asia or somewhere to somebody you can't understand. Um, but these are English speaking people um, who are based in, in the UK and uh, hopefully you'll get better support that way. They also offer a variety of systems, uh, you know, different levels within the system. They have an express start, uh, starter system for the small laboratories. And then obviously they have a bigger system called Matrix, which allows you to uh, do much more with the bigger laboratories and you can migrate from one system to the other. Okay, the key one, the other key things is the flexibility of the system. And there's a technology layer to the system and then a business layer. And obviously the main system is the laboratory limb system uh, where all the bits and pieces are done. And you can add on things like stability if you want to add it on. Uh, it can be, covers a lot of industries, including the plastics, rubber industries, for instance. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, unique graphical tools. This is the main key feature um, where I so say you don't need any coding skills uh, to change screens and change the way you work. A lot of it's all graphical and very easy to um, handle and change. Uh, improved efficiency, uh, the friendly systems, easy to use. And the advantage of the, having the base system, which you can then change on top, using these graphical tools is that the actual underlying system uh, stays more robust, has a longer system life and it's easier to support. Um, of course, you then have the function of the foundation of the system where um, things are much easier to uh, uh, change and update and so forth. Okay, just show you a few uh, sample screens of the limb system. Obviously, I won't go into details, but if you want a demonstration of this type of system, then please get in contact with me or Oscribe um, to show you more details. So basically, within a screen, you can have a graphical uh, screen like this, where you can record the individual steps with using icons. And then obviously, that will drill down to more information, another screen with more information, etc. Uh, you can get the progress of samples in different formats of Bar, bar charts or uh, pie diagrams, so you can see where samples are at and what proportion of the business is uh, being activated. You can obviously get charts, you can get a 
a QC chart if you want here of samples in the lab. You can see the numbers involved with the various uh, stages, reception, preparation, et cetera. And of course, then you can also get management information if you want uh, uh, from what's going on with the samples. Okay, so this uh, next one, just to mention, there are two ways of operating a limb system. One is what we call on-premises, where the, the physical hardware is located on the premises. And uh, so you have a, a server somewhere on the system, typically, um, which then talks to various uh, laptops or clients, as they're called. Uh, and then they talk usually by the internal network. Okay. So that's the on-premise, on-site. The other option, which is quite popular, of course, is what they call the cloud or remote uh, deployment. And this is where you only have a screen in the laboratory, but the hardware sits somewhere on a, a, a vendor site, um, the, 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 the supply of the system, and you then communicate with those. Um, this can be cheaper to run, but then has several problems. Uh, for instance, if the, as we know, the internet is not 100% reliable, and of course it always goes down when you most need it, of course. Uh, law, as we say in England. Um, so um, he has advantages. One of the nice thing about the Autoscribe system is that you can have a mixture of the both. You can actually have an on-premise system and you can also connect via the cloud as well. So you can have the best of both worlds. Um, so if it does go down for any reason and that goes down, you still have the online system available to get access and record data. And then when the system's back up again, you can then reconnect and update and then hopefully put great things back to where they should be. Okay, right. Um, as you'll see from these screens, these are just some example ones, um, of the various different layers that people can have to fit their work. As I mentioned, the important thing is to fit the system around what you do in the laboratory, not the other way around. You shouldn't have to be uh, confined to what uh, the, your vendor says. You need to have the maximum flexibility. And one of the nice thing about the Autoscribe system that I like very much is the graphical interface and the various different uh, uh, ways you can represent data, uh, uh, you know, even things like layer rooms and things like that can be uh, shown on the screen, which I think is very, very impressive. So let's run through that again. Let me, well, let me do that. Let's try again. Just to let you show you again. Just to quickly show you different types of screens that you can get. So you can make them as simple or as uh, sophisticated as you wish. But obviously the important thing is to get them to work to your uh, um, requirements and make it easy to use and understand. Okay. So, as I mentioned, different configurations to uh, how you approach the system. Uh, a lot of the big systems which are available, the big American systems, um, tend to have fixed screens and you must adopt, um, adopt your way of working to their screens. It's not ideal, not very easy. Um, again, there are things like configuration switches that you might have to, options that you might have to configure or whatnot. And there might be some coding involved by the IT group or something, which makes life more difficult. I say the real key is this graphical interface. This is where the thing becomes particularly useful, um, where you can make improvements uh, and have a good system. Okay, and again, let's come back to this coding that you don't need to have this coding change in the main system. And this doesn't cause you problems with the configuration and all of and things like that. So this is the key feature here that I want you to uh, bear in mind. Okay, um, just show you a few more screens here, just to give you a, a flavor where it's going too much detail. Um, you can, this is showing the uh, screen being changed to suit the work a flow of the laboratory. Um, you can have a control panel where you can specify and put limits on various things. Uh, you can also control the screen, have function keys and so forth. Uh, you can also control how the screen is displayed. Um, you can also have controls again within the screen. So the system is very flexible. And uh, 
it's quite unique amongst slim solutions to have what we call the slow code platform where you don't have to actually do the coding it's all done by just drag and drop and and that sort of uh, easy thing that most computer people who use computers can do so this makes life a lot easier uh, to implement the system uh, makes it uh, easier for to use and uh, both from management and from the laboratory staff as well okay um so just confirm that and so we're talking about it allows you to change the workflow the screen the terminology so if you want to change the language that's easy to you know change the what you call the sample uh, or a test um, you can have schemes where you can have numbering so you can link it to sops and that sort of thing um, the reports can be flexible and designed to what you need for say a certificate analysis for one department perhaps a report and a costing for a, a one-year clients for instance so it's designed to fit all your requirements not only now but also in the future of course and this future proof is very important because uh, you know it's important with things changing that you keep on top of things okay um i mentioned before the benefits um it makes life easier uh for uh now and in the future um as i mentioned you can do it for your different languages um it makes the system much more uh robust in terms of its life uh lifestyle and its uh, long levity um it also overall if you're talking about over a number of years it also lowers the cost of ownership and it improves your investment and of course that's Im important and you have these things, you have these various technology that you might hear these buzzwords like agile technology and uh, what's the other one, I can't remember what the other one's called now. There's another one where you do things in steps and in each step is then uh, signed off by the customer before you move on to the second step, etc. Um, and you can do this very easily with this type of uh, procedure. Okay, um, as I mentioned, we've got configuration tools. Uh, where you can design the screens, the menus, event triggers are quite useful. So you know, you flag up something like if there's a, uh, a sample way of spec, then you can test, uh, flag up to a supervisor to investigate and then do retesting, etc. Um, as I mentioned, no custom code required. It's faster to implement. Um, the key phrase here is our way, um, your way, and not our way. Um, as I mentioned, uh, one of the flex nice flexibilities of the configuration system is that you have control over the system rather than the other way around. So again, fitting your work procedures makes life a lot easier. No comes some resistance that uh, staff will have. Um, and again, it will produce um, a long working life for the sample. As I say, we have experience, I know for Autoscribe, that they have uh, customers been using systems over 20 years without uh, major problems and uh, are very satisfied with them. Okay, um, so as I mentioned, um, usually uh, when we talk about implementing a system, of course, um, it's, you can buy out the box systems, but they unfortunately don't satisfy um, most customers um for limbs uh, perhaps from it might suit the very small organizations where they've only got one or two um staff but if uh, things get more complicated then uh, they don't cope very well with that um so what we recommend is that you do a requirement to uh, workshop or identify the what the, the unique um, user requirements are of a system uh, get a, a written specification so you know exactly what is required uh, what the time scales are, what's, what resources are required, what costs are involved. Then you need to have an implementation strategy um, of how you're going to uh, roll out the system. Um, and also very important is training. This is sometimes overlooked, but training is sort of one of the key aspects of a successful uh, implementation of the limbs. And you've got this other system, that's the other one I was thinking of, the sprint system, where you can break the, the various things down into activities, etc. 
Right, okay. System validation, uh, I mentioned it earlier, very important for regulated laboratories, uh, particularly if you get inspected by one of your major customers. It's nice to have uh, confidence from the system that uh, you've got orders uh, in place, etc. And you're adhering to the latest uh, uh, procedures, regulations for your country or your factory. Um, the code um, is unchanged by configuration, so this reduces the project uh, problems. Um, the supplier can help you with validation plans, user requirements, design specifications, and the various IQ, IQ uh, procedures as required. And you can also get a final report, and this can be used to show uh, people that you're, you're doing things properly and in a professional manner. Okay, so to summarise then, um, having a, a system where you have a dual desktop and web uh, browser interfaces, this provides maximum flexibility. Uh, you can have a local system on premise, or you can have a cloud system, or both. Uh, it's scalable from a single user to hundreds of users, several labs across the world. It's possible, obviously, it costs more. Um, fast and the cost effective cost uh, implementation because of the modular uh, approach uh, using the graphic interface speeds up things and saves money. Um, all scribes have, have a, a good record of uh, customer satisfaction. I mentioned about having the appropriate manning of help desk because you will need support, particularly in the early days. Uh, so getting somebody on the phone. Uh, and perhaps even doing a video online video check with them is very useful. And they have quite a few uh, educational uh, YouTube videos, etc. Um, as mentioned, the point and click configuration is useful. Um, easy to use screens, screens, as I say, using minimum effort. Um, uh, I've mentioned the other factors there. And of course, it, uh, people don't have to be computer programs to use the system. Um, it makes life a lot easier and will help you save money uh, and time uh, and really help to make your lab look much more professional. Um, I'd like to thank the uh, organizers, Technobiz, for inviting me to make this presentation. Um, as I say the key message here I'd like you to think about is uh, that uh, when you're choosing a supplier, or scribe is one of many, but you need one that's ideally big enough to deliver, but small enough to care. Um, and I think Autoscribe fits this bill. But if you want any more information, uh, either from Autoscribe or from, uh, from myself, there are the links on here. I say we have the Limbs for You group, uh, which you can uh, access. Um, and uh, there's my email there as well, phil at limbsforyou.co.uk. And I'd just like to thank you for your time. And uh, I think uh, I'm just going to open it up to um, some questions and uh, answer and sessions. And I welcome any questions that you have. Thank you. So I'll just uh, go back. Uh, wait, no, no. no. Yeah, thank you, Phil. Uh, thank, thank you, Phil. You. Uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Get my screen back up again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you've got that one. Right, okay. Uh, get my camera up so you can see me. Where's my camera going? No, it's on there. You got there. Okay. Where's my screen? Where is there? Okay. That's right. I found it now. Show webcam so you can see me. Okay. Hopefully you can see me now. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay, fine. Oh, thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil, uh, for informative presentation on the um, limbs and also the autoscribe and how it works. Interesting. Okay. And, uh, yeah. um, guys, if you have any questions to Phil, you can post the questions in the question box and we address them now. Okay. Uh, Tim, uh, the Phil, we have a couple of questions. Um, I'd like okay. to post onto the screen and you address them one by one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, disadvantages, 
In spite of all the advantages, a limbs does have some disadvantages. What are they? Um, now, there obviously requires uh, a bit of time and money to be spent. Uh, obviously, there'll be savings down the line to um, recoup those um, investments. Um, so you have to bear in mind, although a limbs war has lots of benefits, as I mentioned, they also have a few uh, things that cause uh, concerns and things that have to be overcome. Uh, spending enough time to uh, do the training, because you then have to take people off their normal job to do training, uh, which takes a certain amount of time and inconvenience. Um, there's certain cost elements, of course. You might have to buy some new uh, uh, hardware. Um, you might need to make some connections to the instruments to connect to the limbs, for instance. Um, and uh, those, those sort of things. Um, there's also the physical things. If you're not going for a cloud solution, then you have to think about buying perhaps some hardware uh, for have a service system or whatever um, involved. Um, and of course, the important thing is to allow enough time to introduce the system. Because you're going to change the way that you're going to help improve the system, it's going to take a certain amount of time uh, to um, achieve it. And people sometimes don't uh, uh, not aware of how much time it takes and how much effort it requires to make some changes. Uh, obviously, it's for the best, but it does require some. So you have to balance it up and make sure people are aware that in the early days there is a requirement. And this one important when you're looking at suppliers is to think about are they good at actually with their training and uh, support because that's critical in the early days. Okay, does that answer that question? Thank you, Phil. Any more questions? Just? All right, okay. What are the main reasons that limbs fail? Okay, there, there's a few reasons why some LIMS systems don't work so well in, in terms of implementation. Um, quite often, there's, um, the main thing is that there's not enough time um, given for the people to learn the system and the training, as I say, the main reason that the training is not involved. Uh, there's not enough investment of, in time. There's also quite often sometimes not enough investment in terms of buying the, the hardware to do the job correctly. Um, again, if uh, you're not, uh, you haven't got the computer system to run the, the thing correctly, um, you haven't got the links to the instruments and things like that, then obviously sometimes this will make problems. Um, so there's resistance. And of course, the other thing is that people don't like change. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've spoken to people about using limbs and automation, and they've said, uh, oh, I don't mind sitting, sitting here watching this instrument do the job. I, I find it therapeutic, you know, just doing the same thing every day, day in, day out. They like routine. Um, and obviously, some of this automation takes some of that routine away in that sense. And uh, it does, it's surprising that sometimes that causes some resistance. So it needs to be handled uh, correctly. But the important thing is, of course, is to improve the productivity of the company. And this is one of the reasons why uh, a good limb system will uh, be, be good for you. Okay. What are the difference between on-premise and cloud systems? Okay, fine. As, as you know, there's been a big increase um, uh, with most computer software systems, whatever it be, accountancy or, uh, wages or whatever. Um, there's, the, there's two different types of systems. There's the on-premise or on-site system where you own the hardware and you um, have full ownership of it and control of it, which makes it more secure and less vulnerable to things like hacking from you know, outside sources. Um, and then there's the cloud-based system, as I mentioned earlier, where um, you don't have the hardware apart from a few screens, where the, the data and information and the system sits on a remote server somewhere. 
uh, and then you dial up through the internet and make connections. Then this has some advantages, particularly if you've got multiple labs over the world um, to make connections a little bit easier, perhaps. Um, but then it also has down advantages that uh, if the system goes down for any reason, because the that's not 100% reliable, that the uh, cloud-based system can let you down. And the other problem is if you're going for a cloud-based solution only, this quite often is uh, doesn't have it's not has the same ownership quite often as the um, on-premise type systems do. Um, they tend to be operated by people, you know, in remote locations, um, in China or somewhere, India or wherever, and um, that you don't have control over them, and you're never quite sure how robust what's their what's their um, you know reliability. Are they likely to be here in two or three years' time? What happens if they get overtaken by somebody else? Um, what happens if there's a war in that particular country or whatever? How's that going to affect, uh, as we've seen in Europe, how's that going to affect uh, that sort of thing? Whereas if you've got a system on site, you have much better control of that and you're less likely to have um, problems of uh, external. Uh, but the nice thing is to perhaps to go for a supplier like Allscribe, for instance, I mentioned, who can do best, they can actually do both. So you can have an on-premise system where you have total control of it, but you also have the connection to the cloud to get reporting and to uh, get information so you can get the best of both worlds. Uh, but obviously, bear in mind, you need the security and you also must make sure you have uh, backup systems. Uh, so, you know, whichever way you go, that's important. Okay. Yes, this is a, a very awkward question to, to answer, very difficult one. It's quite complex because um, a typical small system for a laboratory, uh, I mentioned the express system earlier for a small laboratory of uh, two or three users, for instance, would typically cost about six to seven thousand pounds, English pounds, uh, just to give you an idea. Um, obviously, it doesn't scale up in terms of numbers. Uh, you know, obviously, the more people you have, the, the cost goes down per user. Uh, but it does depend on so many factors. Uh, for instance, it could be the number of samples uh, processed, uh, how much work you need to do on samples, how much uh, uh, reporting you need to do, um, uh, what the number of samples are, uh, how they are processed, um, number of users, number of labs. Do you need to connect to other systems like the enterprise system? All that obviously increases the cost. Um, but the important thing is to have a system which is flexible and can do all that. Um, but so you can start off, a typical system would be a, the order of a few thousand, but a big system obviously could run into the tens of thousands easily. Um, but bear in mind, the typical payback, if you're doing the sums correctly, is about 18 months to two years. So then you're saving that money. So say you bought a system, your medium-sized lab, and you spent 30,000 pounds on the system, then after two years, you'll then be saving the bulk of that £30,000 um, uh, for each year afterwards, uh, assuming that things stay in the same, which they won't, but that's uh, uh, just a way of working it out. So, um, so it's not a simple. The important thing is to approach a vendor who can give you that information more accurately. Um, get a demonstration of the system, so you like to see what um, you can see what you like about the system and how it works. Um, and also they can do a, a, a definition for you of the costs involved, uh, what you need, a scope uh, um, survey, um, and then that you'll get an idea of the exact cost before you actually place an order. And that's very important to make sure you get that done correctly. A lot of people, yes, okay. A lot of people use homemade systems and that, things like Access um, for Microsoft. Um, but there are certain shortcomings, of course, uh, compared to LIMS. I mentioned some of the benefits of LIMS, which uh, sort of uh, in comparison to paper systems. The problem is with Excel systems that you tend to have to have several sheets for each type of part of the process. Um, you might have one for the SOPs, one for the instruments, one for the samples, one for reporting. So it can get very complicated. And of course, if it's an in-house system, 
particularly with a small laboratory where you don't have a lot of people, then you're very uh, dependent on the people. So if somebody leaves, for instance, the key person leaves to another job or whatever, um, then uh, that can make things very difficult. Also, the big problem with Excel and these sort of systems is uh, it's, it's very difficult sometimes to actually get access uh, to the sheets um, from various users. Um, they're not as flexible. Um, Excel is very useful for certain things. Um, I use it a lot myself, but it's not the ideal system to actually run a laboratory correctly. Um, they help, but uh, they, it's um, very difficult to organize the work correctly, have the checks, and then get the information. So it um, uh, is very important. Okay. How are we going on? Okay, uh, that's all the questions we have, um, Phil. Um, I have a yeah. couple of questions to discuss with you. Please stay on. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, um, you know, for addressing the issues related to the, you know, data management, you know, the, how to run the labs and how these limbs can help in terms right. of the time and cost wise. Um, one of the one of the things I always see, in particular in the rubber industry, is that you have two types of instruments. Pretty old instruments, which may not have the, all the you know tools uh, connecting them, and the new yes. instruments have already have advanced features, where to yeah. you know, data management, AI, you know, you name it, all, yeah. all the things what LIMS is doing. Um, mm -hmm. These instruments are trying to in integrate into their you know uh, integrate into their uh, lab lab systems. So yes. in, in the in the case of having a both you know old instruments and then you have new instruments, how do you can how can we manage it? You know? Okay, well obviously if you're buying a modern instrument, then they usually have interfaces. They have some form of connector on them, uh, RS232 or typically more typically these days an internet type connection um, with a you know the appropriate cabling and so forth, and they are a lot easier to connect and integrate. Now, some of the manual, so-called semi-manual instruments or the older instruments, actually you can buy interfaces for those as well. So mm -hmm. it is possible on some instruments, not all of course, um, you can actually put on a digital, um, analog to digital uh, conversion uh, box. Uh, there are a few uh, suppliers who provide these um, where it can uh, automate uh, an instrument to a certain extent. Um, it's not easy with the very old instruments, of course. So again, you still have to use manual, but then again, you can design the screen for that instrument. So when you're recording the results, it's in the right format and you're doing the right checks on the data entry, et cetera, to make sure that uh, you're, you know, you're getting the data off the instrument correctly and it's of the right quality and the instrument has been calibrated correctly, it's in specification, uh, and that can be also covered by the LIM system. So mm -hmm. yes, there are solutions. Yeah, but it's always challenging when you're having whole instruments and to yes, yeah. yeah. So and of course, people don't want to spend money in upgrading things, but uh, yeah. um, but of course, if you want to impress your customers and and uh, improve your productivity, then sometimes yeah. you have to invest in equipment yeah. as well as the yeah. the systems that manage it, like the limbs. Yeah. So, uh, but hopefully, if you save money, as I mentioned before, with the limbs. You can save a lot of money over the time period, which allows you to then invest and use that money saved to buy better instruments. Exactly. And this will improve your productivity. And you know, it's a, hopefully an upward circle rather than a downward one. Yeah, I think this uh, when you you mentioned on point rightly that uh, when you make your lab automated or you know you give a better impression to your customers because yes. they see that the quality control is uh, better, you know, data management is good, so they can right. they can count on that. Uh, um, uh, what are the products they buy from the you know the manufacturer? Yes. They have more confidence. So. Um, Lab automation plays a role is not just only managing the data only, but also bringing a new business or continued business from the customers. Yeah. So the as, right I, as I mentioned before, it's very important, particularly at the moment with so much competition in the world, 
um, so much competition with other countries and things like this, that uh, you need that little edge to, to win that order from a customer. And sometimes just the impression of a, a, a well-run well laboratory, uh, a professional looking outfit, you know, um, perhaps hide, out, hide the old fashioned machines out of the way a bit, <laughs> so not on display, but uh, then, uh, then you know, making a good impression is some, can win a big order. And one big order can make all the difference to a company sure. success, yes. uh, especially in this world, unfortunately, yeah. as we know. And, yeah. and uh, you know, you, you know, I, I, based on your experience, you have done so many projects implementation of limbs. I think currently you are also supporting this autoscribe, which is also you know kind of a flexible system uh, yeah. for anybody to custom. You can customize the you know the, the way to manage your lab. Um, uh, you know, based on your experience, um, what are the things any elaborate to be prepared before they starting in you know getting into the limb system? Okay, what do they need to look at? The, um, it's very important to get information um, from the supplier. Um, you can obviously bring in an external consultant, which can be very expensive, of course, but. You may have to uh, justify it because you may not have the time or resources yourselves to do it. So you may need to bring in uh, an external consultant to look at your process uh, to do the return on investment. Uh, if people want, I have some papers on these activities which you can get through the limbs for you group um, on what to look at when you buy a system, what the advantages and what you need to look for. Um, return on investment, for instance, I mentioned. I've got a, a paper on that, which is uh, goes through step by step what you need to do to justify the cost, and also look at the tangible, intangible benefits, as I mentioned. Um, I also have papers on things like validating the system, how to validate it, because that's important in a more regulatory type environment, um, and then things like stability, for instance, uh, the samples need to be uh, stored and aged and things like this. Again. They, they do do modules which allow you to do that as well. Um, so it's a very flexible system. Um, but it's important, of course, when you're looking at a limb system is to get an ideal uh, specification. One thing I know Autoscribe is very good for when they do look uh, to imply a system, before you actually place an order with them, they will go through the user requirements with you and will mm. offer you the service to do, particularly if it's a large laboratory, uh, we will need to do a much more comprehensive uh, user specification and they will do that for you. And they also have a checklist as well of 17 pages I've seen it, uh, which uh, goes through every aspect of what you need from the limbs. So you can check it if you're looking at other suppliers. Um, mm. Because obviously if you're, if you're looking at a limb system, uh, you may be looking at more than one supplier, typically three uh, vendors for instance, and you need to compare those and, and see which is the best cost for that. You've used the best cost benefit uh, as well as being easy to use, of course. Um, and uh, so I have some papers on that if people uh, want more information on that. Um, I can supply those. So you, you have a lot of uh, maybe informative articles on your website, libsforyou.com? Yes, if, if you, if you um, go either through the li uh, LinkedIn pages, Limbs for You, or you can contact me through the uh, Phil at limbsforyou.co.uk, um, and then I can send the, the if people want more information. I have some various papers there. Um, I didn't put them on the website because I I don't have control of them. I like to see who's who you know um, who's looking at them rather than just people just downloading them because you know I want to make sure that they they get the right papers and and I, I can keep track of them and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, thanks, Phil. That's a really interesting and informative presentation um, on the limbs. I think this is very important for current scenario with all the technology. You have a lot of technological advancements are there. And also, the you, you talked about the connectivity. I think now every country has improved their internet connectivity during the COVID time. So even you use a cloud-based or, you know, in in-house in, 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 uh, in or in-house uh, limb system or the cloud-based system both works right you know so um and uh, definitely 
if you say that uh, in 18 months at least in 18 months time you get a return on investment that is very positive news and uh, other thing you talked about is that a good image um, for the company yeah. you know and uh, which will uh, continuously you know getting a good new orders or stable orders from the existing clients you know so i think you can see you have to see in a different perspective not just only looking at lab automation getting a data you know it's set right but you know it's a, a better what feature what i suggest yeah. what i suggest yeah. that people might do are thinking about limbs i've got limbs is look at some of their competitors and you'll see that yeah. the, the competitors are doing well if you look at their laboratories they have a limb system quite often and they're using it correctly and getting the benefits of that. Um, so if you look at most major suppliers, uh, especially the ones that are doing well, um, you'll find that they've got a limb system. Um, and why why would they buy a limb system that doesn't help them to improve their their, their workflow, et cetera, and save money? So uh, that's, uh, you know, the proof of the pudding, as they say. Yeah. Okay, Phil, uh, thanks a lot for joining this uh, rubber industry news server. It's uh, very interesting. Okay. Uh, also, the people should understand the importance of the lab automation and utilizing this uh, limb system. I appreciate okay. the time. Any final remarks to the audience, please? Do you want to give some final remarks to the audience? Phil, do you have some remarks, final remarks, please? Oh, sorry, me. Sorry, I thought you, talk, I thought yeah. you asked you, you yeah. people online. Yes, as I said, mentioned, it's uh, just like to say thank you for inviting me. And to remember that uh, although you, you're rubber-based, uh, limbs can apply to any testing laboratory, uh, whether it be chemical, pharmaceutical, or whatever. It doesn't have to just to be rubber. Plastics, of course, is another related industry, very close to rubber. Um, and any laboratory can uh, benefit from automation. And LIMS is one of the ways in which you can maximize your productivity to save time and save money. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Phil, for, the, for being part of this uh, rubber industry news server. Uh, again, um, it's very useful and informative. I right, talk to you again. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye bye now. Okay, guys, that's the uh, today's episode on the focusing on the how laboratory information management systems limbs can improve your labs efficiency, uh, which saves you both money and the time. And uh, given by the presentation by Dr. Phil Williams, is a specialist on the uh, limbs lab automation, and also he's also involved in the thermal analysis for the last 36 years, and he has suggested. Uh, be follow him on your uh, LinkedIn group, Limps for You. Uh, he has currently, more than 3,400 members are following this um, Limps group. So you may find some relevant and useful information. And if you have any questions, uh, you can always write to him so that uh, he can address. And uh, he's a consultant. Uh, so if you are planning to implement a Limps project in your company, uh, he could be the right person for you. Okay, that's the end of the session. I'm really hoping that you find this session useful. Um, Please do check out our YouTube channel on the, on the on technology channel on YouTube. You can also check all the past episodes of the Rubber Industry News Server. Um, maybe some of you may benefit out of these presentations, uh, which are the part of the Rubber Industry News Server. Thank you all for joining this session today. I see you in the next episode. Bye bye for now.